know. Out the weather outside. Two Shiro keys with uh, cracks in the wings bar will be fixed. And uh, the Saab Safir uh, construction is from 1946. It was one of Saab's uh, uh, major projects uh, after the Second World War. Co uh, 1946, this Exactly, this plane is built in 1954 and it has a, an old, beautiful sounding six cylinder like combing engine around 190 horsepower. I think it does not have a constant speed prop, but it, it's adjustable in pitch and you ha really have to carefully follow, on the, follow up on the RPM. Let's check the cockpit. Okay, about the ergonomics on this plane. You see here is a, a big fuel tank behind the left pilot, and there's a seat to the right, and in the cockpit. Beautiful uh, 1940 design of the cockpit. Originally, there was a set of instruments also on the right side, but for cost reasons, yeah, there are no instruments now on this plane. Yeah, this one is a classic layout, uh, speed and uh, attitude heading, and altimeter down here. Beautiful. You have a stick here, and you have a throttle here. Okay, if you take a look in the cockpit, you have a stick, which you uh, maneuver with your right hand, and then you have your hand to the left. So it's a very cl classic, and all fighter planes have the same, the throttle to the left and the stick in the middle, or, or on the right side as you have on the F-16. There is also propeller adjustment, RPM here. So if then you have to change your hand, take the left uh, hand on the stick and, and adjust the RPM. But the classic is... Right hand on the stick and left hand on the thrust. Here in the middle I have the landing gear and the flap lever. And here's the trim, very convenient. They feel different in your in your hand, and that's important because well you cannot retract the the gear when you're on the ground and well you really have to make a difference <laughs> between those two. They, they feel different in the hand. And you have to twist this one and push forward. It's a bit heavy. Then you track, uh, retract the the gear. Engine instruments in the middle, and the this is a bit different from the original. I prefer the original because then you have your magneto switch here, and you have a start button, which is a classic. I hope it will mod be modified back. Easy. Okay, and what about the ergonomics? Well, this thrust lever, you feel, you see here, I have it like this on my hand. I can feel the angle of the, of the thrust lever. So I don't have to look at it to know where it is. And it's pretty obvious that this is idle. And also when I move this one, the, this one, which is for the left, for the right pilot, I mean, right hand on the stick and and left hand on the on the okay thrust lever. here's a dynamic that's a different system because here you see the the thrust lever is in the middle it's push pull like a choke on on an old car it's well and also only one in the middle at the center of the panel and if you start you should have the hand your hand on the throttle and turn a key you see the Key is on the center, or in the center of the panel, and also the thrust. So you really have you have to have both hands to the right. What's special on this plane is how you maneuver the brakes. 
you don't hit the brakes via the pedals or by pressing the toes down. There are no brakes at that position. Instead, there's a blue lever between the seats. That's where you maneuver the brake. You can see them uh, be between the seats, the blue lever. And that means that your reflex, if you have a reflex from other planes to when you want to hit the brake to press the pedals, that reflex doesn't work here. So instead you have to pull a lever. Well, kind of interesting. Why am I showing this? Yeah, because, well, it's good when it's obvious that you have the tr trust pulled back and if you, that you start with the idle engine on the idle and something really sad happened. This plane was started without the brakes set and with full throttle and you see what happened. This went into the Saab Saphir from the back. Very sad story. The good thing is that no persons were injured. There were people around the planes and no, nobody got hurt. But you see this, this is a really sad story. And yeah, it's gonna be very complicated to repair. The rudder is not a problem, the elevator is not a problem, stabilizer. But the big problem here is that the structure ahead of the tailplane has been damaged. And there are several ideas on how it should be repaired, but it's a really sad story. I will not fly this plane for a long time, but I really hope it will be repaired sometime. It is the dynamic is insured, so... So... Money should be okay, but... It will be a terrible lot of work. Well, a plane from 1954 is... Uh, very rare, so... I really hope it will be fixed some way. And here's a Cherokee. Here you have a yoke and a throttle in the middle. No throttle to the left, so you can fly with your right hand to the left. You fly with the left hand here and the right hand on the throttle. The right pilot can fly with the right hand and left hand on the truss. It's also pretty obvious to see if you see the position of the truss lever. Maybe not so... Uh, if you have a push-pull throttle, it's maybe not so obvious. I don't know. What do you think? Okay, since I'm here, I could just as well take it for a spin. That was a nice flight. And now it started raining, so I go home. Well, that's all for today. Thank you for watching. I uh, guess it has to be some Cherokee flying ahead, not Safir for the moment. I will uh, I'll make uh, videos about two very interesting electric cars, the two most interesting electric cars on the market. Uh, your guess. Take care.